Hey there fellow gamers, you can see me in the reflection a little bit right there. Uh, today I'm going to be unboxing the Blade Runner role playing game starter set as you can see on your screen right now. Uh, I've also got some 15mm figures, a Seiko watch, and a uh, Lictrum uh, leather cover that I made right over here. So let's get started. Uh, this is the Blade Runner role playing game. It's about 12 inches by 10 inches on the box and you can see here about two two inches two inches wide something like that there we go two inches anyway I'm trying to do this without damaging the box too much also show that I can't open a box really well there we go. So I got this. Uh, I got this directly from the Free League, uh, Free League website. Came in uh, about four days. Whole thing, all up with shipping, cost me about sixty bucks. It's a nice box. Got a couple of scrapes and stuff on it, but that's pretty normal. Let's open it up. Yeah, do the classic, uh, classic shake. There we go. Cool. So empty box. Nothing more to see there. Got our little games catalog, which other people have gone through. Uh, the only other one I own is Coriolis, which is pretty cool. Always put your knives away lest uh, they become dangerous. A couple of silicon packets here, silica packets. We've got the, let's, let's be frank, this is the only reason to buy the starter set. I mean, not really, but there's a little bunch of other cool stuff in here. But as you can see, it's a mixture of regular dice, but they also have special symbols on them. So you can see here we've got the one, and then uh, we've got the six on the D6 here. And so Ones are automatic failures. Uh, anything six and above is a success. And so, for example, if we uh, we pull up the D8, you can see we've got we got six, seven, and then uh, eight is on here somewhere. There it is, eight in terms uh, for success. Pretty cool dice. I like the red color. You're special. There we go. Cool, we've also got these uh, cards, which uh, I'm not actually familiar with. I've been reading uh, this material through the digital download that I got, but um, not 100% sure on the cards yet. Delicate operation right here. Anyone who's used a knife close to uh, finished products, you always wanna be real careful. You don't want to damage anything, but you also want to get the plastic off. Well, let's give a, a quick riff through these cards. So we have uh, aerial chase obstacles, like ground chase obstacles. So look, you got an ad blimp, smog clouds, canyons, lightning, construction, open air. Gonna have to spend some time reading these later. Here we got uh, we got ground chase and then foot chase. So, you know, this game is a lot about being a police officer in the future, and uh, so you're gonna be chasing people a lot. People people don't like to get caught. They like to run from the law. So uh, they're anticipating a lot of this happening. Looks like some cyclists can get in your way. You know. Don't plow through the peloton, please. Foot chase obstacles. Got dead ends, red lights, storefronts, monks. So yeah, just a couple ideas here for what you can encounter in Los Angeles in the year, uh, well, I think anywhere between 2019 and 2049 
is really um, the time frame for this. Here we've got chase maneuvers. I'm sure you can choose these or, um, or use the randomness of just drawing a card. So we've got initiative cards, which uh, looks like it's just numbered uh, 1 through 10. And then here we've got uh, mugshots. Mugshot M, K. Oh, okay. It's uh, A, B, C. Okay, so they're all... They're all lettered, A through M. Leah, Lilis Tyrell, someone named Styles and Quell and Coco. I think some of these are the pre-gen characters, but uh, I've only done some light reading last night on this. So, there we go, we got, uh, we got the cards, we got the dice, all pretty cool. We got some trash. Let's take a look at the book here. Okay, so I'm going to take these out. I'm going to put them like this so they're easier to get to. So first thing, we've got our, uh, where is it, 80 page, 80 page book. I've looked through this on the digital copy a little bit. Uh, a couple days ago I posted a narration of this Tears and Rain story. It's not really a story, it's just an intro. It's still cool. We got some history, some core concepts, basic rules. If you're familiar with RPGs, well, this is the uh, least interesting part. Rules are rules. And the game master's uh, ultimately gonna have the final say on which rules you use and how you use them. Um, for Blade Runner, it's not a game master, it's called the game runner. Here you go, go game the game runner. And now will be just describing the story and talking you through the scenarios. Speaking of scenarios, we've got uh, case file 01, Electric Dreams. This I have not looked through yet. So you're going through it the first time with me. Looks like we got a newspaper article couple of mug shots. So I mean all of this is going to be about investigation and uh, really solving the crime but also dealing with some of the core cyberpunk uh, Blade Runner themes which is you know what is a human? What makes humanity? Um, why are people people? You know is you know are the replicants people? Are people actually people? How do you lose or gain humanity? Stuff like that. There's actually uh, tokens you can collect um, for humanity and for promotion. And so uh, through the different cases that you solve or fail to solve, you either gain or lose promotion points and humanity points. Okay. Uh, this I'm not uh, not sure about. We'll open this at the end. Here we've got some nice matte paper um, handouts. Um, these are ready to be... Oh, this one's a slightly different color. Oh, that's a time tracker. So yeah, these are the four pre-made characters ready to be laminated. You can see it's real, real simple, real simple rules here. We've got your key memory, key relationship, where you're from, your appearance, you know, years on the force. And then it's just four attributes, strength, agility, intelligence, and empathy. Along with there's another one driving here, which is, uh, you know, associated with your car. And then each of these four primary traits or attributes comes with three skills. Very, very simple RPG. I love it. Definitely open for, for expansion. And you can see down here, we've got promotion points, humanity points, and then Chinyan points, which is your currency. So there's definitely some abstraction. It reminds me of uh, Fate a little bit, where, you know, you're not tracking individual dollars or, you know, all of your equipment. It's sort of like, this is what you have. You're good to go. 
not not too much about the crunchiness on this game. Cool. So we've got a uh, what is this? A, a C62 Jupiter Moon bus. This is a much thicker cardstock paper here. A little bit of damage on the back. Um, that just kind of how it is. The Hollywood sign. If you're ever up by the Hollywood sign and doing stuff, that one seems kind of dumb to me. Not really useful. Uh, Kill Magazine, not sure what that is. Oh, it's like the offices for the magazine, I think. Yeah, yeah, conference room, kitchen, storage. Apartment 16. Apartment 52, which is an exact match for uh, the character in Blade Runner 2049's apartment. If you want to run that, there it is. We've got a bar called the Snake Pit. It looks like we have some additional foldouts here. This is called uh, the Lilith Memory Lab. Nice, nice, really big double size handout there. Well, it's not really a handout at that point, it's more of a table display. And an Animoid Row, which is another, another bar. Pretty cool. And so once again, nothing on the back of these except it says the, the map reference on the back. Looks like we have uh, the big map roo here. Central Central Los Angeles. We've got a Sector 12. A couple of random, uh, not really useful images. Nothing on the back. And if you get it, you can explore that more yourself. Cool, so let's look and see what is in this case file. Looks like it's stuff that was also in the Electric Dreams book. We got, we got an off-world uh, pamphlet right there. The Complete Works of William Blake. A couple sheets of paper here. We've got some some mug shots. I'll hand out C. Kind of your orders for the first case file. More headshots with information. I think we got our photograph of a of a child. And the Hollywood sign, which matches that map handout that we saw previously. Cool. So yeah, it looks like uh, it was just stuff up corner is a little bit bent on this one here. Just a little bit more care needed by the people packing it. Ah, I see. This is the newspaper handout that we saw in the uh, Electric Dreams book. So yeah, these are just the Electric Dreams handouts. We've got Kill Magazine, Synth Magazine, Looks like some surveillance footage. Looks like a Tyrell house, definitely rich. Looks like uh, Blade Runner's apartment. And also, I don't know, another location. Scooch these back into the case file here. So, what they say is there's going to be multiples of these case files that you can you can buy and uh, enjoy, and it'll all accumulate with uh, one big case file um, that will be like the ending ending mission. I don't know how many case files there will, will be. I'm assuming there'll be at least five probably more like 10, and each one will allow you to uh, explore the universe a little bit more, understand more about replicants and 
um, what Blade Runner is, is trying to say. Um, Free League is really good. Free League is really good with uh, adapting uh, movie and pre-existing IP into an RPG setting. Um, they don't just copy-paste a previous rule set and um, you know add a skin of the new game on. They definitely change the game, edit the rule set to, to match the experience that you're trying to get from, from the franchise. Anyway, thank you so much for spending uh, 15 minutes with me and looking at Blade Runner, the role-playing game starter set. Come back for more Blade Runner stuff um, eventually, sometimes, whenever I feel like it. Peace out.